It was Aston Villa after that. Yeah, again, uh, I joined in the September. Uh, I had an injury throughout the last couple of months of the season at Everton and they weren't quite sure what it was. I recovered in the summer months, went to the Villa, passed the medical. I only played about three and a half months and against Liverpool, the, uh, the stomach problem came back again and uh, I was there for the next 18 months. I never played a game. Mm -hmm. I saw a various specialist and uh, in the end I just had to say I can't do any more. Yeah, and then when you retired, uh, of course, you moved back into Stoke on Trent and uh, went through a few managerial and coaching roles, including Port Vale. Yeah. Uh, Chester, I, your manager. Mm, I took uh, my licenses and uh, coaching qualifications and uh, I took the first, well, all the youth at the Vale at the time and then uh, went eventually to the first team. And then I took other qualifications and became a coach e educator. So I used to coach the managers, to teach the coaches how to coach and coaches and uh, that was something what I still do to this day now. I staff all the A licenses in the summer. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's quite good. Yeah, and I've just mentioned you at Port Bell, you're under Bill Bell who sadly passed away recently. Everyone's got a Bill Bell story, you must have one you can tell us. Well yeah, I was there at 18 months for the, the Vale, doing all the youth, setting all the youth programme up and uh, uh, Neil Baker was one of my coaches I had on the Sunday mornings with the teams, the youth teams. And uh, Richard O'Kell was the other one. And 18 months later, Bill brought me into the office one uh, one evening, Christmas it was, and uh, I said, we want you to take over the first team. And so he gave me my, ja uh, my chance, really, to, to uh, go a little bit higher on the coaching scale. Yeah. 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 Oh, brilliant. Um, and nowadays, um, you took up Taekwondo recently. <laughs> Um, <laughs> what made you take up Taekwondo, Mike? Right? Come on. And all the things, you're an ex I must, have been, uh, I must have been mad. All my mates were saying, what are you doing? We take up golf and here you yeah. are, you take up Taekwondo. Uh -huh. But I always liked the active side of sport. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I, I did tennis for quite a number of years when I, when I finished football. And uh, then I went to Kuwait. I was coaching in Kuwait for 12 months. And one of the sports in the club itself was uh, Taekwondo. And uh, that's when I took it up serious. Yeah. I started training six days a week. You had a bit of practice in the 70s against some of the players there, didn't you? Got <laughs> <laughs> the hands on. I, I think that's where it must have come from, yeah, initially, yeah. <laughs> And yeah. Um, you, you had a chance to represent the uh, Team GB for um, over 60s, we could say it. <laughs> well, yeah, um, well I've been doing it now for about 19 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, I'm an instructor, coach instructor. And, uh, I've got my own academy now in Chesterton Community Centre every Monday and Thursday evening. Which is where you were from, Chesterton as yeah. well, so, full circle. Yep, I give something back to the community mm -hmm. and uh, how, you know, I'm really delighted and I've been given the opportunity to do that. But yeah, 19 years I've been doing it and uh, took all my grades in that. I'm third down black belt at the minute, taking my fourth down next month. So uh, that's, that's it's something to look forward to really. It's, it's tough, but it uh, keeps you focused. And last year I, I was told or asked by my Grandmaster Shin to enter the National Championships, which I'm in his category, so he's a ninth time a Grandmaster competing against him and uh, he got the gold medal and I got the silver. And that led me to getting into the Great Britain squad training. So I've been doing that for 12 months. And then two, three weeks ago uh, the National Championships came round again. Uh, Grandmaster Shin didn't compete this year, so that left the door open. and. Um, I managed to get the gold medal. So I kept my place in the Great Britain squad this year. And uh, two weeks ago I was in Nottingham on the elimination process through doing well in the Nationals. And actually made the European uh, team that's going to be competing in uh, Alicante in Spain next month. Well, that's a, it's a perk as well. So it's a, <laughs> yeah, a massive breakthrough for me, really. So. Oh, that is amazing. That's amazing. So, yeah, people come down and see you in Chesterton. Um, Lucas. You're yeah. right there, mate. You've been sitting there very quietly. I've been listening in. Lucas is our work experience guy. You've just heard that Mike is a black belt. Uh -huh. right? Okay, so be very careful because we're giving you three questions, questions. to ask um, an England legend who played for Stoke no and uh, no pressure on you at all. <laughs> so you go for it, mate. Okay. Uh, well, you've seen Stoke play quite a few times this season. So I was wondering, are there any players you want them to sign this year you think they should sign? Um, what, for next season? Yeah, for next season. Um, well, I think I said earlier that uh, I don't think the supply has been coming from wide areas. Yep. Uh, I think there's been a little bit of a disappointment this season with uh, Kitely. He hasn't really uh, hit the form book in terms of playing every week. Mm -hmm. uh, Etherington's been out injured. 
And so really, I think that's been one of the major concerns for Stoke this season, as a, a wide player. I think they probably need a wide player. And I've always said, even beginning of the season, before the season started, probably somebody like an Andes or a Suarez or a Guerrero, that type of player. Um, Michael Owen came in, but he hasn't. He's that similar type of player who gets in behind defences and around the penalty area. And I think that kind of player, again, I would like to see. Because again, they haven't scored that many goals, and particularly away from home. And when I was coaching at uh, Stoke um, in the 90s, we had a, a Mike Sheeran, who uh, we weren't in games. Uh, when I was Lou McCarty was manager, I was his coach. We weren't in some games at half the time, and uh, he would just pop a goal in from nothing. And he was that type of player who, who created half a chance and, and finish a, a really good finisher. So. I think those are two players where probably Stoke need to be looking at for next season. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next question. Uh, same on top of current current players. Seeing as you played back back in the day, you played as a left back mainly, didn't you? Um, um, who would you hate to mark nowadays? Hate to mark. Um, God, blimey. Probably Ronaldo if if uh, he plays out wide, but he shifts about. You see that the players shift about nowadays. I mean Messi. Uh, plays wide right now and again, but then shifts about into central areas. So I think the European game now, they, they, there's not that many sort of wide out and out players who stay out and out wide. They they make runs in field and leave it the space for the players to get into. So it's that type of game now. Yeah. So uh, I think probably uh, Messi would be the one. Yeah, that's <laughs> a popular answer. Uh, last question. Uh, back in the 70s when you used to play, which footballer did you say had the best haircut back then, back in the seventies? Me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still going to. Yeah, <laughs> Georgie Bess. Oh yeah. That's a good point, yeah. A bit like the Beatles. <laughs> So there you go, three, three questions, yes. Um, he might be after your job in a few years, so you watch out for Lucas. Okay, so it is time for do this comment with this challenge. We've got uh, Karen from Sainsbury's. Hello, Karen. Afternoon. Say hello. Afternoon, afternoon there. You're going to be adjudicating this. You're going to be watching Mike. Yeah. We've got Lucas, you're going to be watching Rob, aren't you? Yes. So, Rob. Put the nose on, have we? Yeah, you've got to put your red, nose red noses on. That's it. Okay. We'll take a few photographs after, but yeah, you can take, take a few as we're going along. So, Marcus in the corner, he's on at five o'clock. He's going to be doing the countdown. We're going to have a minute, okay? So, when I tell you when we're ready, we'll go for it. So, you got your Maltesers ready, guys, yeah? I've got 64. How many okay. is 64. Yeah, you've got 64. Yeah, yeah. The rules are you can't swallow any of them. You've just got to put them oh, in I'll your mouth. Them in. Yeah, you just got to put them in your mouth, see how many you can fit in in a minute. So, if they fall out, you've got to ram some more in there. Uh, Karen said Rob should have an advantage, he's got a big, big gob, but uh, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Okay, you ready? What happens if you melt in your mouth? Oh, that, you, you fit more in, can't you? <laughs> you fit more in. Okay, you, you ready? You ready to count? Yep. Are you ready then? Okay. Yep. On three, two, one, go. And I can tell you, listeners, uh, they're going for it full style. Uh, Rob's sort of going for a technique of putting him in his cheeks like uh, a beaver. <laughs> Mike's doing quite well, they're laughing at each other now. <laughs> Okay, okay, are we, st are we stuck? How many have we got now? Keep going, keep going, keep, keep watching. Are you counting, Lucas? Yeah. How many has he got? He's not cheating there. No, How long have we got, Marcus? Uh, 25 seconds. 25 seconds. You keep the countdown going. Okay, it's looking good. I think they getting to the limit now. We're struggling. We're struggling. This, is a good, this is a good picture opportunity now, Karen. Quick, keep snapping away, that's it. Get him. Oh, <laughs> the noses fell off. Okay, how long, Marcus? Uh, 44 seconds. 44 seconds, so we've got how long left? 15 seconds now. 15, 10, 9, okay, 10, 9, 8, 8 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That's it. We're over. We're over. Okay, we have to put them somewhere. <laughs> Spit them back in the bag. Put your red nose back on. So, um, let's have the countdown. Oh, he's kind of taking a photograph. So, first of all, Lucas. Have you counted? Count. Come back to me. Right, you count. now. You're counting them up, are you? So okay, come back to you. Karen, how many did Mike fit in? <laughs> 30. 33. 33. 30. 33? 30. 32? 32. <laughs> <laughs> you still got them in, that's a 30. problem. 30. 30. 30. So we've got 30 from Mike, okay. Have you counted them, Lucas? I have. Is it close? 
Very. Very close. How many is Rob put? 31. 31! Oh! oh! He just oh. does it. So well done, guys. <laughs> the, the first comic relief challenge of the week. Uh, well done, Mike. That was <laughs> Anyway, the next question, Mike. <laughs> We're going to our break and then we'll say thank you anyway. But we're just going to have to spit all these Maltese out. But what a great effort that was. That was That's like one every tense. two seconds, isn't it? Was it? Tense. I'm alright, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I just spat back them ones. <laughs> yeah.